breakfast breakfast yogurt this looking like it been dip dipping that dipping that dipping that it's come at the best best time and there are very few people here like that big guy just doing some deadlifts i'm doing training after my game obviously i played 70 80 minutes yesterday so i'm a bit sore from that but i want to get my workout done especially the lifting stuff early in the week and this week I don't have training, there's no game, the season is over, but I do want to prepare for what's to come. So that's what we're doing here. We're gonna work on some deadlifts. If you guys do want to know some specific football strength exercises you can use, make sure you check the link in the description. I did it with my mate Adam, he's a great strength coach, and we did some really great exercises, did my pre-activation. That's what we're doing now. Jim, let's finish this workout. <laughs> I'm just watching a new game brain video by Richard Allen. Uh, he's a analyst for Nottingham Forest. It's his game brain video here, and he says 72% of goals at the World Cup were one touch. 101 goals out of 172. Amazing, right? And if we look at the first 20 games, we'll see 33 goals were scored in the in the box with one touch. One touch. You can see in blue the navy blue. One question I get asked a lot is, how should you strength train for football? And I hold off from answering this question because I like talking about things I'm actually qualified to talk about. For example, I don't talk about nutrition because I know some things, I know the basics, but I don't consider myself an expert on that kind of grind. I've been gymming and training my own strength for football for, for years now, what I think is must be five or six years, but I still don't know enough about it to give you really, really solid advice. So what I did earlier this year was reach out to someone with a lot of credibility. He's trained the England under 21s. He's been a strength coach at Southampton. He's worked with a lot of great players. Think of Gareth Bale, think of Adam Lallana, think of Jose Fonte who won the Euro 2016s. If you've ever been interested in strength training for football, whether you're a beginner or you've been doing it for years, this is gonna be a must download, a must listen to audio. So here are three of 21 quick questions that we answered. There's a lot of information on the web when you type in how to strength train for football or something of that nature. You get a lot of rubbish. As a player that myself that spends one to three sessions in the gym per week, I haven't been quite sure if what I'm doing is the most effective way to strength train. So what I did, consulted a real expert's advice and this expert is a guy called Nick Harvey. He's a founder of Performance 47, but he's had an 18 year career working as a physical performance coach in elite sport. He's worked for clubs like the world renowned Southampton Academy, Reading Football Club, and uh, England men's under 21 national team. He's overseen the physical development programs which guided the likes of Theo Walcott, Gareth Bale, and Adam Lallana into their professional careers. These days, Nick has been developing his vision of Performance 47, where anyone can access this elite level athletic training experience to help them achieve their own performance goals. And that website is performance47.com. Basically, if there's any guy to talk to about strength training for football, Nick is the guy. I saw on your website that you uh, coach some pretty decent players from what I read. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously working at a Saints, it really fortunate to, to work in, in the academy there at a time when, you know, you had some players of the likes of uh, Lalana, uh, Gareth Bale, Theo Walcott. So that you know, some 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 big players have gone on to to have really good careers. So um, yeah, and then um, obviously when working with the senior guys at Saints, some of those guys came through to the senior senior setup as well uh, and then you've got the likes of uh, Jose Fonte so yeah and one or two others as well so and then obviously with the, with the England development team you're working with uh, with some some fantastic young players so yeah I've been fortunate in that respect. Were you involved individually with players like say Bale or Lallana? Yeah I mean yeah. obviously Bale was uh, I think so he was um, when I was with the academy I first started he was kind of in the uh, maybe under 14 sort of group I would have thought 
Um, so we had a satellite centre at Bath, which is probably a few hours from Southampton. <coughs> so he was based there, and uh, so we travelled. We travelled down there on a regular basis. And uh, one of the, one of the reasons actually, he was when we signed it, when he signed full time as a scholar, so at sixteen. Mm. Um, one of the reasons was his physical profile was was unreal. You know, he was um, uh, technically he he was obviously good, but he kind of he flourished when he started full time training mm. um, incredible how as soon as he started full time he, he just uh, he just went to another level um, but physically he always he was one of those rare 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 animals who's got kind of all round physical capability so he had he had not only really good speed obviously but um, good endurance levels as well so that's great and, and um, do, obviously superb physical profile yeah and and do you think that was a result of of training that he was doing at an earlier period, or that's when he came into the academy full time. Uh, I think I think he was one who really sort of um, flourished when he when he went in full time training. Mm. But obviously, the stuff he was doing um, as as a as a ch as a younger child would have would have obviously helped him mm. through, through the Saints Academy. Um, it's one of them. He's obviously bl very blessed, uh, genetically gifted. Um, mm. So it's all about just trying to enhance that and, and maximise it, you know. Um, I think whatever we'd have done, he, he would have he would have come through and uh, you know shown shown those physical attributes. But it, it's about just maximising that and enhancing it. If you if you if your kind of genetics mean you're quick, you're always going to be quick. But everyone can get quicker. So even if you're not as genetically gifted as like a Gareth Bale or Theo Walcott, mm. you know everyone's got the opportunity to to get quicker. And part of that is is getting strong and robust and pow powerful mm -hmm. um, with some sort of good quality strength training. Yeah, and and uh, for example, Lalana, he he's kind of come to is it top form in recent times, hasn't he? So, yeah. Um, how how was he when he was a younger kid? Um, yeah, I mean, again, he was uh, not as quick, never as quick as the likes of Bale or Walker, so he wasn't as gifted that way, but. Uh, Te uh, amazing technician, as you can see in how mm. he plays now. And I think he's worked really hard on the training pitch just to maximise his physical qualities as well. Uh, so on and off the pitch, but yeah, he's uh, he's one who who's a real hard worker, loves training. Um, certainly, when I was when I was working with him when he was a young player coming through, just you know you couldn't get him off the training pitch. Just loved it, <laughs> oh, really? and that's uh, you know that's a massive massive thing for me you know having that enthusiasm for, to, to get better and, and to work hard and train, right, definitely. And train every day what age did you start strength training and then what age should you move on to those heavy loads heavier loads yeah um i said there, there's no hard and fast rule mm. so it's very much going to be down to the individual because i think one of the key things practitioners need to be aware of is not just to look at chronological age but look at biological age as well mm. so um, obviously at the same chronological age kids can be very very different physiologically and biologically so um, there needs to be that awareness that not everyone's the same and um, and uh, you can't just say it's a hard and fast rule that everyone will start at nine or everyone will progress at a certain level so in terms of progression um, there's, there's no real limit to, so say they're coming into the academy system at nine I would say you can start, you can start um, getting them into some good um, movement patterns and trying to develop strength in terms of using their body weight and stuff like that. Mm. Certainly wouldn't heavy load at that point, mm. um, but you can start strength training as in trying to develop their body's ability to produce force and control force, and you can do that with body weight exercises and whatnot. Um, using using you know partner partner resistance stuff and whatnot, um, but you're trying to, at that point you're trying to really groove really good quality movement patterns. So you'd be looking at developing good squat patterns, good like lunge patterns, stuff like that. Um, so that players are then just just really getting getting you, you're kind of training movement before you then load at a later stage. Um, but you can start adding load relatively early there's no as I say there's no hard and fast rule when players are very competent in these movements if they're really competent at 10 or 11 then why not start adding a little bit of load mm. I think the key thing is that it would need to be very progressive um, and and 
practitioners need to make sure that kids are really technically competent in any movement before you start loading them up mm. that's that's absolutely paramount because if you load bad movement you're going to get injured and the whole thing we want to do with good quality strength training is is develop like i say develop those robust athletes that that aren't going to get injured um so so for me it's all about movement quality in the early stages mm. um ensuring that players are really technically competent in all the movements you're asking them to do before you then very gradually can add load um, to, to those movements. Hope you enjoyed that little insight into strength training. If you want to get the full episode, uh, we talk about for an hour or so, it's free to download with the article link in the description below. There's like a download now button, so just click it, enter your email, and then you, you got that audio. Or you can actually read that article, but it's gonna take you ages. Anyway, whatever thing you do, it will give you insight, it will give you the tips. Whether you've never strength trained before, or, or you're wondering how pros strength train, and then check that out. Otherwise, Effective Fam, every day I try and give you value. Today, hopefully, you got a lot of value too. And that's just it. Keep chasing Effective Fam. See you tomorrow. Peace.